I am Jeffrey Villardoen in the Principality of Serbia campaign from the beta version 0.92 of the Stainless Steel Historical Improvement Project, a mod for Medieval 2 Total War. The campaign is on very hard, very hard. We have received a gift of a thousand golden coins from our Council of Nobles. Relations with the Papal States are poor. A boya has been completed in Ras. We can now recruit archers. Dessa of Russia has come of age. Serbia is at the bottom of the heap and has 3% the strength of the Moors. That means that if Serbia grows 33 times, it will be equal to the Moors. We have a new mission from our Council of Nobles to take Ragusa. The Byzantines have made peace with the Seljuks. The first unit of Vlastelici Voynic has been completed. They have skins from Rusici Total War. We are now 4% the strength of the Moors. Perhaps we need to keep recruiting these Vlastelici Voynich units. A Byzantine spy has been caught and he has been publicly executed. That does not bode well. We have uh, no possibility to recruit diplomats at the moment, so we are at the mercy of the AI when it comes to diplomacy. The Abbasids have made peace with the Seljuks. My Arabian is not great, but the Caliphate should probably be al Khalifa, not al Khilafa. We have recruited our first archer unit. We remain the world's most powerless faction. Our spy goes to have a look at Ragusa. The rebel army of Ragusa is heading off towards Hungary, which seems like good news. Once we breach the walls, they are finished. We await your order to move in. Our Veliki Zupan marches off to Ragusa at the head of a large army and lays siege to it. The rebels that had walked out of Ragusa, seeing this mighty army, realizes they have made a terrible mistake and disappear beyond our horizons. The AI has gone to work, and as a result, the Moors are now at war with the Kingdom of Aragon, the Byzantines are at war with the Normans of Sicily, the Kingdom of Aragon have broken their alliance with Portugal, and have made instead an alliance with Castile. Portugal has also made an alliance with Castile. Castile then declared a truce with the Moors. What a crazy merry-go-round! So, are the Moors still at war with the Kingdom of Aragon? Portugal seems to have become a client Kingdom of Castile, if I read this correctly. Tessa of Russia was also careless about his diet and has been afflicted with scurvy. We are still the least powerful medieval state on losing the money from keeping an army in enemy territory as we are besieging Ragusa. Ragusa has been abandoned to its fate. Our Veliki Zupan attacks Ragusa. We march to our enemy's doom. The siege is auto resolved, and Ragusa falls and is peacefully occupied. Our Council of Nobles is pleased and recruits three units of Slav levies in our capital. Unfortunately, our men seem to have destroyed half the buildings of this city while peacefully occupying it. 
It's going to take some time before they are repaired. This is the downside of auto-resolving battles. You gain time, but lose money. Time is money, so let's not cry over spilled milk and carry on. The Kievan Veliki Nyaz is dead. An earthquake has hit Aleppo. Yelena of Russia has come of age, and so she has acquired a chastity belt. A very useful thing if you end up getting married to an ugly prince. Our Council of Nobles has come up with a new idea. To send an emissary to Hungary. The only problem is that we have no way to recruit diplomats. We remain weak, poor and feeble, despite conquering Ragusa. With four settlements, we are at 4% the strength of the Moors. Here is the garrison of Ras with a Vlastelici voyage. A 14-year-old prince wants to marry our 14-year-old princess. They are too young for this kind of thing. They will have to wait. Here is our charming princess, Yelena of Russia. She is in Ragusa. One possibility would be to send her off to Constantinople to marry a Byzantine prince. Your Majesty. However, she has such low movement that by the time she gets there, she may be too old to marry. Our spy is searching without success for that rebel army that seems to have vanished. If it is a fight you wish, come closer. It's not them. That's another army. Moving quietly. That's another rebel army. Maybe they are hiding in the trees. Into position. They are not Moving there. Quietly. Also not here. They have vanished. Despite conquering Ragusa, we are making a tiny profit each turn. England has gone to war with France. Talking of the devil, once those buildings in Ragusa were repaired, it became possible to recruit a diplomat. He will be busy for a while. The wooden walls of Ragusa have been repaired. We are in the year 1138, in game turn 14. Our princess is off to see the Byzantines, however, they do not have any eligible bachelors. Suggestion from your leader for us? Receive another proposition? We shall listen. So instead, she offers an attack on independent sovereignties and some money which seem to have made them happy. Oh. Many thanks. You do not realize how much we appreciate this. Your time was most valuable. In the meantime, a Hungarian embassy has arrived. And they offer us trade rights, which kill two birds with one stone. Our Council of Nobles has been pleased by the diplomatic context with Hungary. The Pisans have won to war with Venice. As a result, they have broken their alliance with the Papal States. The Fatimids and the Abbasids are now allies. We have moved up from position 29 to position 26. The Fatimids have sent an embassy to ask for trade rights. Dessa seems to have become a magnet for foreign diplomats. Trade rights are granted gladly. The Fatimid Caliph is dead. The Council of Nobles has made a gift of a thousand gold. It would appear a crusade has been declared, so now the Kingdom of Castile has gone back to war with the Moors. Their truce was very short-lived. They have also gone to war with the Zengids, a Muslim emirate centered on Damascus, so it looks like Damascus is on the line. 
The Holy Roman Empire and France have also gone to war with the Zengids. The Moors have broken their alliance with Portugal while Sicily has allied with the Venice. The town, guard of Ragusa, has been repaired. The Holy Bible may preach peace, but when it is Christendom itself that is threatened, then it is every Christian's duty to defend all that is holy. His Holiness the Pope has called a crusade to reclaim the Holy Lands from the infidel, who would deny Christian pilgrims their right to visit the holy places. It is time for the armies of Christendom to put aside their differences and unite under one banner, the sign of the cross, and give back God's children what is rightfully theirs, or die trying. So indeed, Damascus is on the line. The town guard of Ragusa has been repaired, the Serbian state is struggling to make ends meet, and indeed a crusade has been called, Damascus is on the line. Our diplomat was on his way to Venice when he bumped onto a Byzantine general. What was he doing here, so far from home? The Second Lateran Council has convened a meeting of the Catholic Church. Hungary has gone to war with the Romans and the Zengids. Sicily has gone to war with the Zengids. The crusade is growing. We are asked to finance the Second Lateran Council, which would benefit our priests, but A. We are not Catholic, and B. We have no priests, so we don't waste the money. Let's hope the Crusaders don't attack Ragusa in their anger. We have a new mission to send an emissary to Venice. He's on his way already, my lords. We are back down to position 27. The Second Lateran Council has convened without our financial help. It is the year 1140 and we control four settlements. We need another 46 to win. Almost there. We have one ally, the Byzantines. A look at the chart shows we are far, far behind the great and mighty of the world in military strength, production, territorial and population ranking. Several factions seem to have left a lot of their money in the bank, which tends to indicate a problem with the campaign AI. The Hungarians and the Byzantines seem to be eyeing each other with our spy caught in the middle. The Byzantines look like they have just lost a battle. The Hungarians seem in a better shape. Our diplomat with a crazy name that seems to have no vowels, which I am going to pronounce Zerbomir. Zerbomir Zarkovich has reached Venice. My king, what is it you would discuss? He asks for trade rights, which are granted, but he fails to impress the Venetians with offers to attack the independent sovereignties. something else you would suggest to us, yes? This appears... You have further proposals? Very well, we are listening. Farewell. The Council of Nobles approves a diplomatic contact with Venice. We are still only making about 9,000 gold per turn. Crusaders seem to be crossing our lands on the way to Damascus. The King of Denmark is dead. May he rest in peace and not be excavated and put into a museum by future archaeologists. A Hungarian crusading army is crossing our lands. The Byzantines have made themselves scarce. Regnum Hier Solimitanum, that is the Kingdom of Jerusalem, has declared war on the Zengid's soul have Venice and Poland. Here is Damascus. 
The Crusaders have put together a mighty army and are about to besiege Damascus. Let's hope they remember to leave a garrison in Jerusalem. At this point, we are completely surrounded by two factions, the Byzantines, who are our allies, and Hungary, who is at war with the Byzantines. We have no harbor, and no ships, and nowhere to go unless we attack Hungary. In the meantime, the mighty of the world grow mightier. Our spy has at last bumped into that large rebel army that was once garrisoning Ragusa. They have been hiding in a forest where they have been secretly feeding on acorns for the last few years. They seem ready to pounce upon a small Hungarian force which lays in ambush, presumably waiting to surprise any Byzantines passing by. The Hungarians have only some spearmen. In the meantime, our princess Yelena is required to go and speak to the Hungarians and tell them they have no business to be chasing the Byzantines around our kingdom. We want to discuss an attack on those rebels about to give you a nice beating which you actually deserve for trespassing into our lands. The Hungarians don't want us to ask them. Maybe they are hoping that they are also ambushing Byzantines. We will not accept such a something else you'd like to suggest. We have no complaints with this plan. Finally, money talks where common sense doesn't. Our diplomat Serbomir makes it to Vienna. Just outside the city is a peace and diplomat waiting for an audience. A perfect opportunity for a diplomatic chat. The peasants agree surprisingly quickly to an alliance. Something is fishy about this. They object to attacks on rebels. This is unusual, although in this case it makes sense. Why should our rebels be their problem? But money talks in the end, and it is all for a good cause. So we have now a second ally, Pisa. A large stack of Hungarian crusaders are now outside Ras. My king does not count you among the enemy. That's a nice thing. Let's hope it stays that way. We are Christians, after all. I will make them fear you. Yes. Our Grand Zupan attacks the rebels in the woods. We shall not relent, ever! Creating a mighty horde, my king! Leave your mercy behind, men! We shall show them none! The Hungarians do not come to our aid. We don't need them. We can win this battle without their help. That's okay. The rebels have a nice army. This will be the biggest open battle of the campaign so far. Now they, are doomed. Attack! they are doomed indeed. So here is our army uh, deployed on a hillside, the very nice looking Vlastelichi Voynich here on the left, and their chainmail, a unit from Rushichi Total War. Here is our king, or Grand Zupan, Veliki Zupan, on the right, on the upper left hand side there. And uh, his bodyguard is moving down the hill, ready to pounce on our enemy. Here's the enemy army. Now you see them, now you don't. The archers are visible, the rest have gone into hiding in the forest. We have uh, two generals, one of them being uh, Grand Zupan, and now they are charging downhill. So 
those rebel archers are dead meat. They start running too late. They get charged. Here they are. Some vanilla units. You can see huge difference between the vanilla archers on one side, the rebel vanilla archers, and the glorious Rushichi Total War Druzina unit. And so here the enemy uh, cavalry are charging our men. They have been countercharged by a unit of light cavalry we have. And here is the enemy uh, cavalry unit, their heavy cavalry, very formidable. We have charged them with our generals, one of our generals has charged them on this side. The other general is out here chasing routed units and he is now charging that enemy heavy cavalry unit in the rear. And so the enemy cavalry has now been charged on both sides. Our enemy also has a general who is running around at this point. And uh, he is standing in dismay, seeing his army suddenly fleeing and routing. They had been chasing, the enemy general had been chasing one of our cavalry units. And then they started chasing some other unit, and by the time he got into the field of battle, his army had been routed. So here is the enemy general in this pink horse uh, comparisons. The enemy army runs. We must pursue and hunt them down. And he has been routed. along with the rest of his army. We also have some light cavalry, some scouts. This is the unit the enemy general had been chasing around and was late for the battle. And we are hunting down the last few remaining fleeing rebels. This marauding army that was once the garrison of Ragusa. This is a clear victory that goes to only men of great virtue and valor. So the rebels have been defeated with relatively low casualties on our side, just 242 men. Our two generals' bodyguards slaughtered everyone. Sorry if this is getting repetitious already. <laughs> Your enemies lie dead before me, my king. You shall not relent ever. Our Veliki Zupan is victorious, and for his daring in battle, he's gained a new bodyguard, a shield bearer. And here are the Hungarians, happy to watch the destruction of the rebel army, hopefully as happy as you were. Thank you for watching.